Hi everybody, this is Mino Ramos and I'm so glad that I had an opportunity to attend the FinCon conference here in New Orleans. This is October 2023. I'd like you to meet my guest, Denzel Rodriguez, the finance geek. Here's, uh, and, and we'll get into a little bit more about his talk, but Denzel, uh, just tell the audience uh, really quickly uh, a little bit about your channel and um, you know what you're doing these days and, and really what you learned from this experience at FinCon. Yeah, so this is my third time attending FinCon. So if you are someone that's in media or in money and finance or social media, you want to become an influencer, you want to create content, help serve people, FinCon is going to be a really unique place where you can make some really solid connections. No one's going to sell you. No one's going to recruit you or anything like that. And everyone is open-minded here. Everybody is willing to listen to what you do, even if they don't agree with what you do. They're very open-minded. People are willing to go out to dinner and have a two, three, four hour conversation with you so you don't have to feel like you're on a, a, a speed dating kind of a networking event where it's like you gotta say what you do, grab the car and go. Say what you do, grab the car and go. This is more like you can just literally bump into someone in the elevator, figure out what, what they're doing, what their plans are, and if it aligns with yours, boom, you go and have a blast. Mm -hmm. right? So with that being said, on my channel, I run a ministry of finance called Finance Geek Ministry. The purpose of that is to help people that are in negative cash flow situations, paycheck to paycheck, zero cash flow, break even, or very, very low cash flow, you know, like under a hundred bucks or maybe a couple hundred bucks. And really the, the primary initial goal is to get every one of those, that group of people, lower income, lower middle class, middle class, and even upper middle class, and even higher upper middle, upper, upper middle class and high income earners that live paycheck to paycheck. You know who you are. And the ones that are rocking negative cash flow of three, four, five, six thousand plus dollars, yet you make 25, 30, 50 grand a month. It's like, what are you doing, right? Like we need to figure this out. So Finance Week Ministry helps with that. And our goal is to simply get to 500 plus cash flow or more per month. And obviously for the ones that are the higher earners, it'll be proportionate to, to what you make. Yeah. But the goal is to get to a positive cash flow consistently each and every month and then figure out what do we need to do with that money to create some secure cash flow vehicles, create independence, uh, maximize income. Because there's only two things that we can do with money to improve our situation. You either increase the top line, which is how much money you make, or decrease the bottom line, which is your cost of living. You can only reduce that by so much and understand that every year it's gonna keep rising because mm. of inflation and taxation and things like that. So increasing this top line can be really a, a hard thing for people to grasp when you're in the lower middle class and, and middle class and even if poor, right? Or just, you know, completely broke. Very hard, but with the methods and strategies and messages that I'm giving on my YouTube channel and then within Finance Geek Ministry, it's a, a very targeted approach. So you get into my community, I'm going to target you. I'm going to speak directly to you to your situation and say, do this, do this, do that, do this, do this, do that, right? According to what you got going on. The more willing you are to, to commit and share, the better off you will be, the better off you'll, you'll get served in my community, right? So that's, that's the, the ministry part of what I do. I run a financial consulting, coaching, strategic practice where I help clients one-to-one. -one. Those are people who can afford to invest in themselves and so they do so, and then I use that money and I feed it into the ministry work that I do for free, helping people, you know, those that are willing to exchange social currency in exchange for financial coaching and support. I'm willing to do that deal any, any day of the week. And then I have my monetary business, people exchanging money for value and how to better their personal finances. So I've been doing that for the last five years and Miner is, yeah. a, is, a, is a client and we work together and he's had tremendous results and he's growing a YouTube channel and we're collaborating and we're and we're growing and we're just following God's will so that he gets glorified in the whole process. Yes, sir. That's a great introduction and so it, it wasn't always like that so for you know my audience that hasn't been on his channel um, originally from Queens New York uh, Puerto Rican Colombian family and you know he he comes over to the, the Florida area and you know if it's okay you know share a little about you know your dad so his father uh, was um, you know incarcerated for you know uh, over a decade. Found out it was he was actually innocent, and so his his ideal client has always been single moms. And so 
when the, the single mom idea came around was because it was his story. It's what he lived. He saw his mom struggle through, uh, you know, about finances and, and, and how, to, how to really begin to trust God. When uh, we met in South Florida, <clears throat> we had an opportunity to, to talk a little bit about, you know, what you were doing and the growth that you've had from that time to now is, is, is astronomical. But what, what caught my attention about Denzel was when he mentioned velocity banking, infinite banking, those were like concepts that I really liked. But then he mentioned kingdom authority. That was the separator from me able, you know, being able to listen to anybody on YouTube, the concepts that I liked, getting people out of debt, not necessarily the slow way, but the fast way, and not necessarily one formula for everyone, but just being able to take the individual's situation and then crafting something individually for them. The, the thing has always been is he put, or God put him in a situation where he had to trust him in the process. He had to trust that God was gonna take care of him and that God was gonna take care of his mom. And in return, as he honored God and always mentions God and kingdom authority in everything that he does, what I've been able to see kind of originally from the outside is your ability to really look at something look at a debt and mathematically you have a gift of being able to say if you if you give me these four numbers and you're committed to the process we can craft out a, a plan where in four five six seven eight ten years you're going to be completely out of debt and now we're going to have be able to talk about something something different so when when you first you know get together with people maybe there's a little bit of fear and anxiety a little bit of shame about the money you know that you know about how that how they manage money i i work uh, particularly with the heart, people's heart would, would need to be transformed so that then their wallets are, be, you know, conformed to God's glory. What can you say to people about the sufficiency of God in their finances and the contentment that we could have where we go, don't let me have too little money that I curse your name and don't, make me, don't let me have too much money that I forget your name. It's that, that balance in the middle where we can trust God, but not forget him. So how, how would you say that, you know, that your process of taking them through their finances, that they could completely, that process actually leads them more to looking up and, and trusting God more. Yeah, and you're probably better at discussing that than I am, because those of you that know me, uh, especially on the, like the clients that I have is I'm, I'm very a, a logical kind of a person. So I often don't even go the emotional route with a client in the beginning. It's all about capturing as much data as I possibly can about that person within the, the hour that I have with you. So the less I can have that person talk about their pains and struggles and more about what's going on today and what's the data, what's the situation, I then craft the strategy and then over time, once they've done the thing consistently, then I can open up a little bit more and, and hear what they have to say because I do understand mindset, their, their heart, their intent will have an effect on their long-term success. And so whether that is a successful strategy or not is still yet to be determined for the last five years. That's how I've been rolling and I've had a, a lot of success in terms of the people I've been able to impact. But I also know that I'm probably turning away people. I have, have had many people get on a phone call with me and it's super tactical, super strategic, and some people will just simply not follow through. And then I just remind myself their, their mindset just wasn't ready for it. So quite often, before I have people pay me for things, I allow them to experience who I am a little bit in, in the process, and I give them as much of the pregame prep work in advance before we get on that call and make it happen. Now, to your point on the faith side of things. What usually helps people who are of the faith usually are vocal about it, usually will let you know in advance. And I have a way of you sharing that with me in advance. So when, when people hit my YouTube channel, they will, those of you that know, know. When you hear kingdom language, only those that know kingdom language will pick it up. Even if I'm not using the typical church terms, right? And to be honest, kingdom language is not a typical church term that you, you hear in the church. Kingdom language has to do with royalty, has to do with protocols, regulations, laws. It's almost very, it sounds like you're, you're in a world system, but there's a Godhead running the whole thing, right? 
and the messenger is not giving the message based on what he or she believes or thought up, the, the messenger is an ambassador representing that God that has the governed supreme authority over everything. So those of you that know will know when you watch my content, you'll pick it up and be like, is this guy a believer? And then if you're a person of faith, typically there's an initial trust and connection there. Then they reach out, they let me know that they're of the faith. Once you do that, it's a, it's a good thing and could be almost a bad thing for you because now you give me permission to turn up the heat on your faith where I can now challenge you because iron sharpens iron. So when I'm dealing with a non-believer, I'm not going to uh, put my values and principles and morals on them. They already know that in advance, getting on the phone call. And so those are some of the easiest conversations because it goes straight to tact. For my believers, you let me know you're a believer you're in the hot seat now because I now have the authority to now turn up the heat on your faith and challenge you on a couple things, right? And maybe debunk some of the religious traditions that have been engraved in you somehow along the way. You know, what we don't realize is there's a lot of leaders in the church, pastors that have no financial authority. They have spiritual authority. All of us have certain authorities that come from the author, God the Father. He's the author. And then he has authority because he's the author of all. If you create something, you're automatically the author. If you write a book and you get interviewed, that interviewer is interviewing you because you wrote the book. They're not interviewing the ghostwriter. They're not interviewing the editor. They're not interviewing the marketing person that you hired. They're interviewing you. You're the one that developed it. You created it. So now you have the authority, which then leads to you being authorized, you have authorization to now spread this message, teach others so that they can provide an impact. So those of you that are believers, we are part of a royal family. So we immediately are given authority by God because he's the author. And because we're created in his image, that makes us authors, also creators of things, which gives us authority. God gives you authorization to move forward in that skill, gift, or talent, or all three. That you mm -hmm. have. So because I know that about you, I now can turn the heat up and poke at some of the beliefs that you have where, hey, I just want to have enough money to do this and protect my family and da da da. And I'm like, where in scripture does it say that? See, now I can point. I'm like, well, point me to the scripture that says that you should have enough money to just protect you, cover your wife, your kids, and maybe some extended. Show me in scripture where it says that. I have not read that anymore. I've read that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. In order to leave an inheritance large enough where your children's children will experience that wealth in a environment today where we're in hyperinflation, taxation, devaluation of the currency, you're going to need millions of dollars for your children's children to ever experience the wealth. Because the, your children's children, when they're born, now you gotta count 18 to 25 Ooh. years before they actually will give credit to you. Like, oh, my, my, grand, my great grandfather, my grandpa is the one that, that built this because now they're old enough, maybe they went to college and now they're working in the family business. Mm -hmm. Think about how many years it's gonna take of, of covering that children's upbringing, their education expense, to then finally get to witness what you did on earth is going to take multiple millions of dollars to get there. There's no way that you can just solve for just having enough money to be debt free and just have enough money to pay your bills and, and die. I, I don't know where that's scripturally based, mm -hmm. All right? So that just, that, that right there, along with probably 50 other things that we do in the church in regards to money, crumbles, falls apart. Because when you're a royal kingdom citizen, royal family that created all things, right? God the Father that created all things. You have the Son, you know, the Holy Spirit manifesting His will into the physical realm. And to think lack or to think small is the most, one of the most disrespectful things that you could do to God. Mm. Is limit His glory over your life. God's goal is to be glorified. He wants the glory. God's goal is to maximize His reputation, right? He, in order to maximize His reputation, He creates a product, human beings, spiritual beings. Creation. Right? And so that, that kind of stuff fascinates me, fascinates me. I'll spend about maybe 10, 15 minutes allowing you tell me about your story a little bit, 
I know you're a faith person, I can trigger you a little bit. Five, 10 minutes, you're like, okay, um, um, let's do this, mm -hmm. right? And then it's tactical training for the, for the rest yeah. of the way. So that's kind of like how I've been approaching it. I'm not saying I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a master expert at it. I'm not a, a preacher. I'm not a, a memorizer of, of scripture or the word. I just know kingdom. Yeah, I know kingdom really well, and, and, and that's the thing I'm trying to be masterful in. Right? And, and I think that the, to, to segue into the next topic is it, it's, there's a lot of guilt, there's a lot of shame about the decisions, the financial decisions people make. And maybe it wasn't intended that way, but some of, some of the talking heads kind of talk down to people's situation where they, they're not willing to open up to someone because, you know, again, that shame where... Th I think because of my story, to me, it was more about how do we impact this individual to glorify God with everything they have, N not, you know, not just their money, but their, their time, their purpose, all of those things. So the partnership that we have is I didn't need to learn or didn't have to have Denzel's skill of being able to take all your spending rhythm. Notice I didn't use the B word, right? That budget. Um, I, don't, I don't believe in budgets because budgets don't work for the majority of people. But a spending with them, we're able to understand that as we go through the numbers. And so even though I understand the concept here, I know I can take someone and prepare them to be able to meet with Denzel. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about where people are. And I show like a little diagram of a wheel and where is God in that wheel? The majority of people have the emotion driving the wheel. Some people have family history driving the wheel. Some of the people have inflation or their job situation driving the wheel. But the conversation we're gonna have is how do we have God driving that wheel? And that formation allows for people to be prepared to talk to, to Denzel and be able to go and, and figure out their individual plan because not one family and their dynamics and their relationship with their 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 partners and their relationship with their family and how do we conform those relationships to the relationship with god and so we have those conversations and in, in my coaching practice and and we we talk about all of that but i didn't need to learn the math and even though i've i've helped thousands of people find their financial you know figure out their financial structures to figure out what they want to accomplish with their money. I'm confident with that. I love that. I love talking to people about that. What I can't do, what I'm not gifted to do, is what, what I saw Denzel doing, is he actually, I believe, is a, is a spiritual gift of being able to take a look at these numbers and go, I have dominion over these numbers. I can tell these numbers what they need to do. I can tell the money where it needs to go. I no longer have to worry about where the money is going all different directions. Mm -hmm. His structure is going to be understanding that dominion that we were given as authors of, I mean, you know, God being the author, but he is giving us authorization to go ahead and, and create and dominate. But you can't have dominion if your head isn't in the right place, if your heart isn't in the right place. So now you'll be working with me to kind of get the, to, to get God on that wheel, running it. You're trusting him fully. You're obeying him fully. And you're believing him fully in every area of your life. And so from there, we can go, you're ready for, like, again, we never really talked about this, but you're ready for velocity banking. You're ready for infinite banking. You're ready for, for, for moving forward. So I talk about three different levels of, of finance. The people that are, you know, paycheck to paycheck, I'm worried. Uh, that's level one finance. Level two finance, you're a little bit more relaxed. You, you understand that God is your provider and now your money is having babies, hmm. right? And then with the strategies that, you know, that you have, it's gonna be like, how do you have those babies become soldiers, right? Your money, like I'm, we're talking about investing and now we're talking about creating stuff that you didn't even think possible because the, the fact is most people go into a corporate arena, which I was part of for 30 years and where, where was the impact, where was the growth? And you're always like in that, in that wheel, right? That it, it just, it never goes anywhere. And so from there to be able to live knowing that you have sufficiency, you have full trust in your creator. And then the message to that would be to the world, maybe they're gonna see something different about you and they're gonna be like, 
what did you do to get to where you are? How could you be so content? How are you not worried about inflation? How are you, you know, 80% of the people aren't happy in their job. How are you so happy doing what you do? But that's because you understand the bigger kingdom, you know, picture. So I think that the, the collaboration, the, the partnership came from understanding that part of Denzel that I, being around him as much as I am, can see that that is a gift. I believe that that is a God-given gift. I think that a lot of people need to, need to see it and he needs to get in front of more people. And then, excuse me, I would say even just thinking a little bit more about, without getting, getting too much into it, but like where this is gonna go, maybe, maybe a parting question would be, from what you're seeing in your space, um, financially speaking, with inflation, with you know, the, the changing of currency, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that people are gonna have five years from now, 10 years from now, if they don't get their heart right and their finances right aligned with God? Yes, I'll speak to the, I'll speak to the, the finance part, like getting that secured in the next 12 to 24 months. All the experts are saying it. You've got, you know, the Ray Dalios of the world. You know, we're talking World War III, you know, potential. There's things happening in the Middle East, like that's affecting things globally that could have major impact. So there's macro economy that can affect your micro economy, your, your, your personal household, right? And those things are, are connected. Macro, you can't control, right? The, the global things that happen, you're not able to control those things. So I try to focus on what can I control today in my microeconomic economy in my household today? And that has to do with your four major numbers. If we can learn non-traditional financial concepts mm -hmm. that can benefit us in a very fast moving society world system today where there's 33 plus trillion dollars of debt and 160 plus trillion of unfunded liabilities if i can teach households how to leverage efficiently and effectively how to become better borrowers and stewards over capital resources we're going to be able to create a gap in that time when crisis does come. So there's people watching right now that are already in a crisis. I should like, dude, I'm already in my recession. I'm already jobless. I'm already, you know, messing things up. And then there's people that are worried that you're watching, you're in a worried state of mind. You're like, I don't know if I'll have this job next year because the company is is tanking. So a lot of you experience that or you're like, I might get laid over, be, laid off because the the company is going down. So for speaking of those people right now that have jobs and you're worried because you don't have an, uh, enough of a savings plan or emergency fund, expenses set to the side, that kind of a thing. A faster way to build up protection is to understand how to properly borrow. Mm -hmm. If you can learn how to properly borrow, reduce your interest costs of borrowing or potentially offset it completely, you could buy yourself more time in the event you do lose your job, because here's the reality. The, the gurus over here that teach you to avoid debt like the plague and don't use debt and debt is bad and all that stuff, the reality is when you lose your job and you have a home and car payments and student loan payments and overall bills and stuff, stuff has to get paid no matter what. So you lose your job and let's say you had maybe a couple, couple grand in savings and you burn through it in two to three months. Now, now where do you pull from? Maybe you ask friends and family, okay, so giving, gotcha, maybe that runs dry. What would be another option outside of not using debt? Outside of not using debt, you, you ask for help, people give money, maybe you have savings and you burn through that, you still haven't recovered yet. Outside of debt, your only other option is maybe you had a 401k, 401k. right? So a lot of people will what? Borrow but you're borrowing from yourself, right? Or maybe you do a liquidation of assets, right? So before we even borrow from the 401k, let's say you start selling things in, in your home, right? So now you're getting rid of valuable things that you care about, you have your little garage sale, and maybe you get $1,000, $2,000, whatever it is, and you burn through that. And now you have to borrow from where? Maybe you borrow from yourself, because it's maybe at a cheaper rate, let's say, or you liquidate and sell more things. Now what else? do you do, right? Outside of not borrowing debt. Maybe you sell your house, maybe you sell a car, maybe you downsize, right? That could be a radical approach, a radical move that maybe didn't have to happen because that's a big decision to sell an asset of a car, let's say, or a property will what? Buy you time, what? Six months, a year, whatever the case may be. So you're making a huge decision, a long-term decision in a, for a short-term gain. Whereas what if 
you could borrow from the banks, borrow from the institutions in a more efficient manner that could buy you the time that you need, are you gonna pay interest? Yes. Do we pay less interest by doing velocity banking concept? Do we buy more time? Are we more efficient? And then when we do eventually bounce back, get that other job, get that promotion, start that business, things start rocking and rolling again, you know how to radically efficiently pay off that debt faster. And now it, it relieves stress in my opinion as well, where it's like I didn't have to sell the car because I need that for the kids and to get around work and be, and be mobile. And I didn't have to sell the house. I was able to keep the house, not lose it, and that could be a long-term asset later on. That house could be a leverage tool, you know, leverage like a HELOC or something. So this is all tactical stuff that I believe are gonna prepare a lot of people when the inevitable does happen, where there's a recession, there's a crash, and you are now in a forced position where you have to borrow. So the difference between the person that's an educated borrower, the person that's not educated in borrowing, is they're gonna be left with the worst options from those institutions. High interest credit cards, high interest personal loans with origination fees, payday loans, mm. AMSCOT, right? So you're gonna be left with the worst possible lending decisions rather than the person over here that borrowed at 0%. Maybe they were to get $100,000, $200,000 worth of capital at 0% or 4.99% or 5.99% simple interest, and they are doing velocity banking with whatever income they do have, extends buys time, they didn't have to go into further debt than the person here that just strapped themselves to another 10 year, seven year, 15 year commitment on these different debts. Yeah. So that's, that's just tactical stuff right there. You can speak to the, to the heart of, of the people's situation, but that's my, my tactical training right there. It's like, I would rather have the debt that I could use where like I can have debt, but not be in debt, if that makes sense. Like I can have access to $100,000, $250,000 worth of capital. I have access to debt, but I'm not in debt. So I'd rather have it, not need it, than, oh my goodness, I need it now. And now the banks don't want to give it to me or they're willing to give it to me, but at a very, very high cost, mm. high rate. Yeah, no, that's good. And, and I think that, uh, it's it's kind of a combination, you know, with with the relaunch of uh, the brand, you know, with Trusted Covenant, is the 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 typical language in the church has always been about stewardship. The the language that we have is leverage. I mean, that's I know that like they they don't think that those two words, but they're, they're, it's it's actually what it is. And in in what's to come, that's what it's going to be. And so when when you know, we get together and go over your numbers. The foundation that I follow is gonna be exactly the foundation that Denzel will, will use. What I don't have to be good at, and I'm just being very transparent. I love the numbers from here. Denzel goes <laughs> zeroed in, tactical sniper version, boom, dominion, right? Like, they, they, and that's the tool, and so, but some people are not ready to get to that point. So I do, I say financial heart surgery, where we go and we really focus on the beauty of God's provision. We go and, and, and just really experience the impact that we could have and the challenge that I think most people will, will, will agree to. They believe in that God can heal. They believe that they are saved. Why isn't it possible for them to believe that God is interested in the way that they handle money? That just baffles me how they think that they have to figure out this money thing and it's all about them. How do I produce more? How do I grow more? How, how, you know, how do I get myself out of this? And they're not putting their full trust in the one that created them, that's given them everything. Because at the end of the day, everything that we have belongs to him. Everything, right? And so we're saying, work on your heart so that it's transformed and then your wallet can be conformed to the glory of God. And then what you're gonna be able to do is so, what, you, you gotta follow Denzel's channel and see where he was, where he is today, and where he's going because of the principles that he follows that are kingdom principles. Denzel, I really want to thank you again for spending this time with us. Uh, I know that you're going to be a blessing to many people if they're willing to hear and do. And as I bring you more content, as I delight in giving you the ability to see God for the beautiful things that we that we can do with his sufficiency with the contentment that we we could have just 
knowing that God just lavishes us with all the good things, leave out the prosperity thing, be careful with that, be careful with the prosperity gospel, but that we'll be able to together as, as we are kingdom ambassadors work together to make sure that the, the message of hope reaches not only the people in the church, but the people in the community so we could really be the light that God has designed us and left us to be. Totally. Any parting words? I would just share with you that the, the mindset part is, is important. It's just not an area that I know how to really articulate well enough, and that's where minor comes in. So the reason why I'm so tactical is because I have the mindset. So you need to have the mindset in order to get tactical. So the, a lot of the people that I work with already have the mindset, and all I'm doing is perfecting it with a tactical strategy, right, to complement their existing solid mindset that they have the money beliefs that they have about themselves and all I'm doing is expanding it. So if you're not, if you don't have that mindset piece yet, a lot of the things that I'm gonna say is gonna run over your head because some of you are probably thinking, well, Denzel, you know, you talked about, you know, debt leveraging and all this stuff, but you didn't mention God at all. And it's like, I understand where you're coming from. That's where Minor Ramos comes right. in to teach on that. <laughs> yeah, that's because right. Because I'm someone that I'm already, like I built my entire business model off of a kingdom giving principle where people would just give money to me based on the value they received. I wasn't even charging for the stuff that I was doing when I first started out. It was just all giving. Raised over six figures, right? In a short period of time, less than a year. In my first year in business, did just under 300K in revenue. Understand that I know how to live off of 30,000 a year and still do. My personal cost of living, my personal expenses are around 70 to 80,000 a year, personal. Yet I'm doing multiple six figures per year in my business and my profit margins, because I have a low cost of living, because I have the mindset for it, I'm my profit and profit over revenue any day of the week, right? My profit is six figures, over six figures. What do you think I'm doing with that money? Spending it, wasting it? No, I just got done telling you, my cost of living is only under 70, 80 grand a year. I know people that make 100,000 a year and spend 100,000 a year. Mm, There's okay. a mindset issue yeah. there. I can't give you the tactical unless you have the mindset. And so my whole thing is I'm working with people who already have the mindset. If you don't have it, I'm not your guy, really. Maybe you might get inspired by some of the stuff that I talk about and then I might go a little emotional here and there because that's just me working on, on myself at. 27 years old, but I'm right here. I, I dwell best in the, in the tactical and the strategic strategies here. Mm -hmm. I'm already in the game of glorifying God. I'm already playing that game and it's a fun game. I just give it all back to God. He pours into me. I then try to outgive him. I can't outgive him, but yeah. I still try. And then he, he outgives me more than I could even comprehend. And it becomes this fun kingdom game that we play together. So I don't know what your relationship is with God, but mine is, is a fun, interactive, engaging, mm. intimate relationship with the Father. And yes, we talk about money a whole lot. We talk about strategy a whole lot. He gives me ideas and I just go execute them. And that's it, that's mindset. Perfect. So I'll leave you with that. Thank yeah. you so much. Well, thank you so much. And I, I wanna talk about a little bit about the dynamics. So um, Denzel is half my age and some people would not naturally take advice from someone who is half our age. But the, the funny thing is that most of his clients are my age and up. Like, that's the craziest thing to me. Like, I would think that he would be attracting all those 20-somethings and all those 30-somethings so they can avoid all these problems. Their mindset is not ready. <laughs> all right. yeah. it, they just, it, it, it's impossible for them to have a conversation with, with Denzel because it, it, it just hasn't worked. So whether you are a young family and you want to learn these principles and you, and you want to get all that junk out of your head, that's, you know, that's where, you know, that's where, where, where I come in. So I can prepare you so you can have a conversation with Denzel. And so with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, this has been a blessing, you know, to, to both myself and, and Denzel. We pray that it's a blessing to you wherever you're hearing this message. And don't forget, find contentment in the one who created you. There is sufficiency not only for your soul, for your eternity, but also for your money. I'm Minor Ramos. Thank you very much. God bless.